The question is, that's on the order paper. Stephen Park. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. I think it's appropriate, though not necessarily relevant, to actually mention the sombre and serious and very sober debate we had earlier on around the, the murder of Lyra McKee. And I think that the statements we heard from the Northern Ireland members present are ones that will resonate long in this House and, if I may say, far beyond this House. And it makes it all the more important when we are dealing with business like this, which is being dealt with in the absence of an executive, in the absence of an assembly, that we cannot allow that vacuum for the gangsters and the men and women of violence um, to succeed and to flourish. I profoundly hope that this we heard tonight will be a tipping point and that there is the possibility of a return to normalcy, which will be epitomised by this sort of piece of legislation. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is an extremely unusual um, piece of legislation. This is actually a piece of made legislation. Um, It comes before us, as the Minister said, small and perfectly formed. But it was actually perfectly formed last month. And it was was what we call um, an unusual affirmative statutory instrument. Now, I'm sure that there are some people who actually lie awake at night dreaming about unusual affirmative statutory instruments. I do not count myself amongst those people. But this is a... (laughs) This is... This is a piece... Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm being heckled from the back benches. What I do at night is entirely my own business. If, if I may say, um, one of the first questions I asked was, you know, why is this piece of legislation made legislation? Why um, was it expedient for it to be made without the prior approval of Parliament? And the answer, Mr Deputy Speaker, is quite simply that the Secretary of State was deep in negotiations with the various parties in Northern Ireland, and it is a tragedy that we have had to take this piece of legislation now um, after all those negotiations have taken place. And I would actually ask the Minister... Um, In in the explanatory note that we've received, it refers to negotiations that have taken place with all the Northern Ireland political parties. I'd be interested to know whether there were any negative comments or other suggestions um, made at that particular time. Because at the moment, uh, I would like to put the House's mind entirely at rest and calm those beating fragile hearts and say that Her Majesty's loyal opposition will almost certainly not be opposing that. And with that, I give way to the Honourable Gentleman, the Member for East Andrew. Uh, Shadow Minister, for giving way. Giving way. One way in which we could avoid this legislation tonight is for the Secretary of State to simply put it up to the parties in Northern Ireland that, if they wish to go into the Assembly, as they all say they do, then the Secretary of State could call the Assembly tomorrow, yep. see who turns up, yep. and that will show which parties are the real obstacle in trying to get the Assembly reformed again. Mr Speaker, I have known the Honourable Gentleman for East Antrim for many years. I knew him when he was actually opposing his predecessor uh, and in a very impressive campaign. But I have to say he tempts me down a primrose path that I must sadly resist. I cannot at this stage in my not particularly successful parliamentary career claim to speak for the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland. Um, The closest I've ever come to the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland is being on the other side of the dispatch box. Um, And I'm sure she's quite happy with that. Um, so I cannot possibly, um, the, with, the, with the sort of the, the distance I meant, um, <laughs> I cannot, Mr Deputy Speaker, make any comment. I'm familiar with this statement, and the Honourable Gentleman has made it before. However, what I would like to say with regards to tonight, we do not intend to oppose this. In fact, in contrary, we actually intend to uh, confirm that our support for this legislation, but we would like to see some indication of the roadmap to seeing devolution restored. And I would, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, like to refer to the right, my right honourable friend, um, the former Paul Murphy, now Lord Torvine, who presented this in the Upper House. And I have to say, um, Paul Murphy, who I remember very, very well indeed, and is held in great refect, affection and respect. I still remember um, the, the late Reverend Dr Ian Paisley every morning would greet him with this, this salutation, and how is the Apostle Paul this morning? And Paul Murphy was a man who who loved Northern Ireland. In his speech in the Upper House, he referred to the fact that Northern Ireland is the least democratic part of the United Kingdom and possibly of the European Union. With no nationalist members of Parliament, or, um, or for that matter members of this House taking their seats and no Assembly. And I think tonight we realise the full impact 
of that situation. It's a situation that cannot be allowed to pertain. There's been some talk, Mr Deputy Speaker, of the talks being accelerated by the appointment of an independent arbiter, someone to oversee it. That is something which is is a superficially attractive proposition, but I have to say that at the moment I understand that the Secretary of State is in discussion with two committees of MLAs, and I think we'd like to see how that progresses. I'll certainly give way to the Honourable Gentleman from Ballymena. Sorry, North Antrim. Giving way. Has he any idea of what's going to happen after August expires? What we're being asked to support tonight takes us to August, and he knows how quickly July will pass with the marching season. Has he any idea what the plan is post-August? I did earlier on ask the um, Honourable Gentleman opposite for some indication of a road map of where we are. Uh, all I can say is that if the Secretary of State or the Minister, let alone myself or my colleague, the Shadow Secretary of State, had the remotest idea of where we would be in two or three months, then frankly we would be buying lottery tickets and not be sitting here tonight. Um, I have to say, with respect, I do not know. All I know is that we have to show willing, we have to show determination, we have to show energy, we have to show an absolute commitment, because we cannot carry on with a situation where this sort of legislation is taken through the House in the absence of those who should be dealing with it, because this is Northern Ireland business, and it should be dealt with by Northern Ireland legislators in Northern Ireland. I hope every single one of us accepts that. So, um, of, of course, I, mean, I could hardly refuse. I'm very grateful indeed. I'm very grateful. <laughs> no, I'm sure you won't regret. No, I am sure the honourable member will not regret taking intervention from me. I'm really very curious to know, um, having listened to what he's just said, whether in fact the um, Her Majesty's loyal opposition, as we uh, often hear the loyal opposition being described, and um, whether in fact uh, you would support. That means the opposition party would support the Secretary of State if she were to exercise the power that she has to call a Northern Ireland Assembly election in the event that the parties do not come to any agreement before the expiry of August. Would, would the Honourable Gentleman and his colleagues support the, the Secretary of State in that effort? Mr Deputy Speaker, once again I am tempted um, by the spirit of hypothesis. Um, I cannot imagine that situation at the present time. It's not really appropriate at this stage to even hypothesise along those lines. I'm perfectly prepared um, in in this silence um, of the tenebrious gloom of the tea room to discuss these things, but I think on the floor of the House we shouldn't really be making such suggestions and such uh, prognostications. Mr Deputy Speaker, I'll finish by saying that we support this. We will not be moving to vote against it. We understand that the Secretary of State is doing her best on this. I Obviously, like everybody in the House, I want her to do more. I think she wants herself to do more. I think every one of us feel that way. It is sadness that we support this tonight, but we understand it is absolutely necessary. This is the first piece of made legislation I've seen come before the House in this particular way. I profoundly hope it won't be the, it will be the last. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, I profoundly hope that there will be less and less of Northern Ireland business taken on the floor of this House and let it be repatriated to Northern Ireland where it belongs. We support the bill. Thank you.